How's it going, guys? So we have a difficult question for genetics because we've got to deal with all the annoying math. I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to know to answer these questions very quickly on USMLA. Save you a lot of time and annoyance, okay? The first thing for this question is just saying, well, we're dealing with cystic fibrosis. It's an autosomal recessive disorder. We're not trying to make you diagnose it. We're just saying there's CF, okay. Chromosome 7, CFTR gene. Now, the next step is, are we dealing with two-thirds or three-quarters? We're dealing with two-thirds. Now, some of you know this already, but very high yield for us familiar that you memorize that two-thirds is the answer for the chance that a phenotypically normal patient, that is an unaffected patient, is a carrier for an AR disorder if they have a sibling with that disorder. Okay, And the reason for that is because you know that since this woman is unaffected, she can't possibly be the little a, little a in the Punnett square for CF, right? The, the disease combo. So what are her possibilities? She could be big A, big A. That means she's not a carrier at all for CF. Or she could, she could be two times big A, little a, right? So she's left with two thirds chance of being a carrier. So the two-thirds represents the chance that she's a carrier. Fine. Sometimes the exam can just ask you that straight up. What's the chance she's a carrier? And it's like, boom, two-thirds, easy. If you've heard of it, you have to calculate it on the exam. Now, we have to look at this next variable is going to be what's the chance that the husband, who doesn't have a family history, that he's a carrier. And I said I'd make this very simple for you if you assimilate. All the Hardy-Weinberg garbage, okay? The whole like one equals P squared plus two PQ plus Q squared and one equals P plus Q. But this is what you gotta know, all right? This is what you're gonna do. When they give you the disease frequency like this, you're just going to take the square root of it and multiply it by two to get the carrier frequency, your two PQ. Just relax, this, this is what's gonna happen. You look at the one over 40,000 there, can't you just tell that the square root of that's one over 200? Right? So this is Q squared, 1 over 40,000. Our Q is 1 over 200. So 2PQ, just multiply by 2, and you get 1 over 100. So we know we're dealing with E or F here. Let's do this again. Let's say they give you 1 over 10,000 as your disease frequency, and they, and they ask for the carrier frequency. That's all they're asking for. What would you do? Well, the square root of it is 1 over 100, isn't it? And then just times 2, 1 over 50. That's your 2PQ, or if they give you 1 over 90,000, that's Q squared. So 1 over 300 is your Q times 2, 2PQ, 1 over 150. You see? So you can kind of just glance at the number and just go, boom, that's what they want without having to really like think about it too much. Okay, so 1 over 100 here is 2PQ. Then 1 quarter is simply the chance that when two people come together that they could have a little a, little a combo for a child with an AR disorder. So we just kept that the same. It's not dramatic. We're not trying to play tricks there. But the correct answer is E because, holy shit, we're asking the chance that they're going to specifically have a daughter because you got to multiply. What's the chance you'll have a daughter? It's one half. If we said, what's the chance the couple will have a son with the disease? It would still be choice E. Okay, so your short point of consolidation here. Two-thirds is the answer that a phenotypically normal patient who has a sibling with an error disorder will be a carrier for that disorder. 2PQ, you're just going to glance at the Q squared, the disease frequency in the question. Just take the square root, multiply by 2, that's your 2PQ, your carrier frequency. You know the deal with T-memory content, so it's Appreciate your time, that's it.